it's called the open session meeting of the uh, for uh, the May meeting of the Rancho Muria Association Board of Directors to order. Darlene, can we get a roll call, please? Bob Lucas. Here. Larry Shelton. Here. Carol McElmaine. Here. Rob Brown. Here. Here. Just know that Tim Mady and Sam Summers are absent. We'll put it down as an excuse. Yeah. You're out point. fooling around. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think they saw the audience that was here. Like, <laughs> uh, all right. For, uh, first order of business is public comments. The public shall have the opportunity to directly address the board on. <laughs> Any items of interest, public comments on items not on the agenda and within the jurisdiction of the board are welcome, subject to reasonable time limitations for each speaker. If you wish to address the board at this time, please state your name and lot number and reserve your comments to no more than three minutes so that others may be allowed to speak. No action will be taken. Each item of business will be introduced by the president. Public comment for that item will be open and the public will have the opportunity to speak on that item. Public comment for that item will then be closed and no additional public comment will be allowed. At that time, the board will discuss item and then take action. Uh, do we have any public comments? Yes, we do. Well, come to the podium. And <laughs> stand up and give us your name and lot number. Hi, my name is Mike Burke, lot 3183. And I just wanted to thank the board for putting in the pickleball courts. Uh, I know there's been a lot of uh, stuff said on social media, a lot of comments going back and forth from, I think the Rancher Murrieta Moms group, some of them were not real happy that those got put in, but I will tell you they've been used every day since the nets got put in. Uh, there's a group that play every day. There's others that have used it. I was out there on Mother's Day. I saw three different families using it, including mine. Uh, I think it's a great thing. I think they're going to be very busy. You'll probably be looking at maybe putting in more in the future because I think the demand... <laughs> I, 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 in fact, I know the demand is there. It's the fastest growing sport in America, as I think we've probably discussed before. So anyway, thank you very much. You did a great job, and I know we all appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Well, well, so I think Jim Moore behind there, who was our former president, I think was a driving force. But if we're going to put more pickleball courts, I think dog parts have to go. <laughs> <laughs> Jim Moore, lot 2011. Let me remind you, there's a strict three minutes. Three, three minutes. I know, <laughs> um, I know we, we, we got started on the pickleball course when, when I was on the other side of the table there. And uh, I want to thank the board for following through on that. And especially thank Rod and his crew for doing it. Uh, the, the courts look just magnificent. I mean, they are professional looking and uh, it's a nice addition to Rancho Marietta. And um, yeah, they, they're they getting a lot of use. Unfortunately, some of the use is not by pickleball players. Um, I talked to Rod before the meeting. We might want to think about maybe some signage. Uh, we saw skateboarders jumping the net and <laughs> Oh, great. Soccer players kicking the ball into the net. And so but that's, you know, when they're vacant, somebody's going to find a use for them that nobody ever dreamed of. So yeah, I uh, think some signage, I, and, and I can't remember what the tennis courts have, but similar signage probably to what the tennis courts have. Something over yeah. There. You know, so reasonable. so thanks again. I'd like to stay for the whole meeting, but I have to go put my electric bike together. Let me ask you, Jesse. <laughs> <laughs> you, you may want to stick around there to find out the results. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, how is that? How how is the pickleball courts up here on uh, Stonehouse impacted usage at the in the south on the tennis courts now? Are they still be used the same amount, and then we're. I I don't I don't know how much the. I know the group that my wife is part of, they've started using mm -hmm. Stonehouse. Um, so I, 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 I don't know, but I do know because I'm up at the dog park and I see the, 
the usage of the new courts and it's uh, in fact the first morning they were open they were they were getting used good i'm glad to see it i mean i, I know there was the demand and i'm glad the demands hopefully being met yeah so. thanks again all right thanks jim any other comments all right hearing none we'll close public comments next item is the consent calendar Consent calendar of items are considered routine and will be approved by one motion. There will be no discussion of the item unless a director requests a specific item be removed. Does any uh, director wish to remove an item? All right, hearing none, uh, do we have a motion and a second to approve the consent calendar? Um, me, I will make a motion to approve the consent calendar as prepared. I'll second that. We have a motion and a second to approve the consent calendar. Any other comments? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Passes unanimously. Uh, next item of business are the minutes. We have two sets of minutes. The first are the minutes for the April uh, 18, 2017 uh, regular open session meeting of the board. Do we have any motion to I'll, those? I'll move to uh, approve those. Do we have a second? I'll second. Any comments, corrections, changes? Right, hearing none, all in favor of approving the April 18, 2017 meeting minutes, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Passes unanimously. Next uh, minutes are for the April 20, uh, 2017 special joint meeting with the CSD board. That was our trail tour. I move to approve the April 20th meeting minutes. Do a second? I'll second it. Hillary seconds it. Any further discussion on it? None. All in favor? Say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Minutes are approved unanimously. The next item of business is my report on executive session. Uh, prior to today's meeting at 5.30, we met in executive session. Uh, we approved the minutes of the April 18th executive session. We approved legal invoices. Uh, and we discussed uh, issues uh, involving uh, correspondence with, from our council with regard to development. Everything that we discussed in executive session tonight, and then we adjourn for this one. Greg, general manager. Uh, my first item is update on the Greens Park. Uh, I talked to TSD Engineering today. Uh, the county has approved the plans, so the only thing we're waiting on now is for the fire department to sign off on the plans. And so um, I'm sure the fire department is probably wondering why they're reviewing the plans because there's really nothing that can burn there. But anyway, uh, we'll work with the fire department this week to get their sign off, and then we can go ahead and start ordering materials and, and scheduling the start of construction. Uh, the second item is the update on the pickleball courts. I uh, just want to report that the courts are complete and that uh, we've talked about having a ribbon cutting. Um, maybe in the next uh, two weeks we'll get up and, and have a ribbon cutting and invite some of the people that play pickleball to come and, and take part in the ribbon cutting. I, I will get to wield the presidential scissors, I think, for the first time. <laughs> and, then, and then the uh, last item is the uh, update on the fountains. Uh, four of the fountains have been up and running. Uh, the fifth fountain is still not running. Uh, Smud needs to make some uh, additional modifications to the wiring. They're supposed to be out on Friday. And so hopefully by Friday, all five fountains will be in operation. And also the uh, pump building, or the pump, uh, pump house that we've had over on the lake that for probably the last 15 years, we've said we're gonna uh, put a permanent enclosure around it. That enclosure is complete, so now it's got a block wall around it. Uh, so it looks much better than it has in the past. And I, I think the people that uh, live around the lake uh, aren't looking at what they was really an eyesore. And I think also it's going to help with the noise that came from the pump house. And that's the uh, end of my report. Right, thanks, Greg. Um, committees, finance committee, Cheryl. The finance committee did not meet this month, so I don't have a report. All right. Um, ARC is... Um, 
Mark, are you going to handle the ARC? So I'll go ahead, since we don't have uh, Sam here, I'll go ahead and move to approve the transfer of ownership of common lease agreement of the lot 17 and 2. Do I have a second? I second it. Any other discussion? You hear me now? All in favor, say aye. 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 No, okay, passage again. Let's say, what's the next one, Mark? Okay, then uh, let's take up uh, lot 246. I'll second. Are there any comments, questions? This is, you said there's an am amendment only? I it's guess, an amendment yeah. to the existing lease. Okay, does it, it doesn't add any more, does it add any more square yes, footage? Yes, it does. It adds additional square footage. Okay. The original lease was 22 square feet, so they're adding 1,111 square feet. Okay. Any other questions? Huh? At all in favor of approving the common area lease for lot 246, say aye. No, I aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. That passes unanimously. Then the last lease that I bring forward is the lease for lot 1017. And that is for Are those trees um, in on RMA property or the? Yes, they are. They're in common, they're in common area. All right. So and the and the construction of the digging and everything is that's within the drip line of these trees, right? It's at the very edge, as you'll see in the, uh, the graphic. Yeah. 
the, the three people that did uh, uh, object that were pretty uh, objection uh, pretty vocal about their yes, concerns. Sounds like they did their due diligence, so I'll second that. Okay. Any other comments? We have any since there was an objection to people in the audience. Any public comment on the proposed leads? Do we have any other? I have a, I, I have a question. When you have a a strong um, letter such as we got on this, do you meet with those people? Do you give them back a letter? Did they, did they have a response to that? Were they satisfied with that, or uh, were they, they still? Were okay with that. Uh, the one thing that we had uh, talked about is if the trees, if something for some crazy reason happened to the trees, uh, we would replace the trees. Okay. All right. Well, it sounds to me like you've done your due diligence and, and covered all the bases. And I think it was appropriate to get the, the arborist report and have the community review that. So I don't have a problem. We got a motion and a second, right? All right, we have a motion and a second. Any other comments? Questions? All right, all in favor of approval, say aye. 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 Any opposed? They pass it unanimously. Yes. Uh, all right, thank you, Mark. Let me make sure we go in order. So <coughs> <we're not really coughs> That's my Communications. Cheryl. We haven't met this month either. Huh? That's okay. I see. None of the Mets. <laughs> I see Brandon hiding back there. Did you know, does Greenfield have any comments to make? Yeah, maybe we maybe we can have Brandon. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'll shuck. I'll put you on the spot. Right. <laughs> Start wearing a disguise. Just all right. So I guess the only thing we have to update is um, right now we're in our last probably week with Dish Network uh, negotiating our programming to be changing it possibly in June adding uh, additional channels to our current package. And that would be, be for the, that's for the basic? For the basic, yes. And what channels are you adding? Uh, it, it depends on what they, uh, um, we'll be talking with the communications committee on, on what channels may be added. So we'll be bringing that, but will the that channels be a, will be changing. Will that have a fee increase associated with it? Possibly, okay. possibly. It, it depends on what, what dish and, and us uh, finish negotiating, but yeah. we're almost done. So in, in June, uh, expect something different. Are you uh, are you going to realign the channel uh, configuration? Uh, yes and no. So the majority of channels will probably be the same, but I, I believe we're going to be removing a lot of the uh, uh, Spanish channels and some of the uh, home shopping channels and whatnot, and replacing those with other things. Yes. So, <laughs> yeah. How's the uh, cable removal and burying and all that kind of stuff going? <coughs> Uh, pretty much we're done. Uh, I think there's only seven or eight locations that we haven't finished putting together. And that's just because we've ordered uh, custom PEDs for those locations. So there's uh, some that were uh, above ground that we're putting underground. And due to uh, roots and other utilities in the area, we've, we've custom ordered seven, I think, that we only have left to do. Um, I'm you've uh, to install to get through streets and across streets and everything mm -hmm. you've made this half inch or whatever cut in the mm -hmm. in the asphalt and then after you got the line in you've kind of put a a, a seal coat or something over that but but the, the cracks are still there and I've got some near me that are actually growing weeds out of now. Correct, and, and actually um, we have a, uh, an order with our, our subcontractor who installed those and many other areas in, in Rancho that um, they're going, we've actually asked them for warranty work to come back in and reseal those. Okay. And so uh, we have, I think, 
45 days or 60 days, somewhere in there left to see if they're going to uh, do warranty work or if we're, we ourselves are going to be doing that. So. Good. But they will be filled in? Is mm -hmm. that what you're saying? They will be filled in either by our subcontractors who originally did that or by us. It, it, it just, uh, we're working on that with them. And so it, yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Are the so, calls reduce? Are the are the calls reducing themselves each month as, as we as they had been? Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah we have very few calls um, right now. I mean, we had a lot of calls about uh, just landscaping in general. We had a lot of that, and then we've had a lot of uh, actually we've had a lot of customers increase because we have our our promotion of just a free month. You know, just the tri green field out. We have I think in the last week eight people take us up on that on that offer. So, and a lot of people have seen us. Uh, uh, finish uh, setting the peds and whatnot and so they're calling in due to that asking us for um, you know now that we're done to uh, you know try us out so but other than that uh, the customers with uh, issues um, it's very minimal my giants my giants had a terrible pixelation problem last night <laughs> oh, your giants? <laughs> yeah, giants. Talk about that game. No, I haven't had any complaints to me. No, that's not an invitation to start complaining to me. I'm going to remind you, Cheryl's a human being. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I think it's going good. Think that's it's going good, yeah. It's kind of as we expected, you know, many months ago. Yeah, and actually we have, uh, the only other um, issue you'll see us out working is that I think we have uh, about 30 locations that we've identified where we want to change out their peds from above ground to, to um, flush mounts. And so we're kind of, you'll see our guys out there kind of working on random yards, removing those. All right, great. Anything else? All right, thanks, Brandon. Uh, compliance. Is that you, Denise? Yes, it is. Um, the committee met on Monday, May 1st. Um, they reviewed, um, heard seven hearings, um, made for a long meeting, um, and then reviewed all of the violations listed in your packet. Um, and you can see in your packet also is the summary of violations so the ones with the blue stripes are the ones that RMA does, and then CSD's reports are also in there. And that's the end of Tim's report, unless anybody has any questions. <laughs> so, uh, I noticed the speeding tickets are way down on the CSD. Are they going to have to issue any citations for speeding? <laughs> Maybe people are starting to pay attention to the signs. Uh, yeah, maybe, maybe the, your newsletter. The yeah, newsletter. Yeah. Yeah. But I find it hard to believe that there was only three people that speeding. Well, I think the key word there is caught. Yeah. Well, and if you well, look wait, over wait, wait. for May, we had 14. Oh, I was looking for 14. Yeah, May. May's 14. I was looking at the CSD report. Property maintenance was way up. I'm sure it's because things are starting to grow. and. <coughs> so, all right. Nothing else, Denise? No, nope, that's it. Uh, all right, next uh, item is the Governing Docs Document Committee. I will uh, deal with that. Uh, governing Documents met on May 8, uh, 2017, to uh, review two proposed non architectural rules. Um, and we'll talk about the first one first was to allow electrical personal assistive mobility devices. And you will see that copy of the draft rule in your packet. An electric, you need to <laughs> keep it quiet. Yeah. Uh, electric personal assistive mobility devices are um, segways. <laughs> Compliance Committee had a draft a rule and it was forwarded to governing documents or its comments, uh, corrections. We made some minor changes. Originally, it had been under Section 1, the proposed rules 
part of section one of the rule two for motor vehicles. Uh, we decided it was better to put it in its own section, so we moved it to section 16, which is at the end of the non-architectural rules for motor vehicles, and then just some uh, stylistic changes more than anything else. Um, so you see the, that, like I said, it's in your packet. You can see what was read is what was done by, uh, by the um, compliance committee in the blue, blue font is what governing documents. <coughs> That, uh, that rule is um, consistent with uh, California's rule that also allows uh, electric wheelchairs on, on uh, public uh, sidewalks and streets. Yes, in fact, when we were looking at it, we found that uh, individuals on Segway are actually treated as kind of the vehicle code as pedestrians. Mm -hmm. uh, and I certainly feel like one, too. Yeah, I like it. I like it when you're out on the show. Um, so I will make a motion. Next step would be to send the rule out for public comment. So I'll move that we uh, send the proposed rule on the uh, electric personal assistive mobility devices uh, out for public comment. I'll second that. Any further comments? All right. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? No? Passage unanimously. <laughs> The next item was a proposed uh, non-architectural rule that compliance committee afforded to us to allow certain electric uh, bicycles in the north. Um, as you recall from our meeting last, last time, the uh, compliance committee had concerns as to whether uh, writing the rule was appropriate under our CCNRs. went ahead and wrote the rule because that's what they were instructed to do even though they had their concerns and reported back to the board and the board sent it to the governing documents committee to review um, its compliance with the CCNRs and making the changes that felt necessary. Uh, the committee spent a considerable amount of time and effort looking at the vehicle code sections, looking at the CCNRs, looking at what the CCNRs allow, uh, what kind of authorized vehicles are restricted on the north and what are not, uh, based on CCNR language, and came to the conclusion that, um, and we also re uh, reviewed the legal opinion that, that our, our council did on, on, on the issue that you've seen as well, and the committee came to the conclusion that the language likely violated our CCNRs and they recommended no changes be made and to the uh, section one of the use to include those electric bicycles at that time and, and the vote was to recommend to the board not to proceed with that rule. So, any questions, comments, anything else? <laughs> I do think that, that uh, since, since we do have people that are using electric bikes in the north, which now is illegal, well, it, it always has been illegal, but it's confirmed by the, uh, um, uh, <coughs> by the governing docs group that, it, that it's illegal, I do think that we need to strongly look at changing the CCNRs. Um, this, is, this is only a, a wave of the future that's going to get more and more numerous of people using very quiet vehicles for transportation, exercise, and various other things. And, and uh, I think it's just this old rule that we need to, to seriously look at modifying. And, and I understand the complication of changing the CCNRs, so my suggestion is that we somehow put this on hold, the staff kind of shelve it until we have more items that need to be changed in the CCNRs and group that with it. And, and just for further clarification, the committee, I agree with your recommendation that the CCNRs would need to and should be changed to better reflect um, uh, uh, probably allowing, clearly allowing certain vehicles such as electrical bicycles, or certain classes at least of electrical bicycles in the, in the, in the, in the community. One, one, of, one of the current uses is uh, 
it, is, it kind of falls into the category a little bit of wheelchairs and segways because it's used by, by someone who has a minor handicap and that's his means of, of not only transportation but also exercise. So I think that's a significant thing that we need to, to address. Yeah, no, I don't, I don't disagree. Um, and so I think, yeah, at some point we need to address um, making some sort of changes along that line. I mean, I know we've done it, or tried to do it with motorcycles, so I don't know how the community will feel, but I guess if we can get move forward at some point with the CCR change, we'll find out. So, yeah. I don't think it would be as contentious as motorcycles. What's that? I don't think it would be as contentious as motorcycles. Yeah, you know, depending on how the rule of the CCR was right. granted, yeah. that they may put a well, the only problem is now that they're producing electric motorcycles now. They're producing electric motorcycles now. Totally so then what quiet. happens if somebody comes totally in with an electric quiet. motorcycle? <laughs> the, the difference is that an electric bike can use trails and uh, uh, pathways that are, that are currently dominated by uh, golf carts. And, and, uh, and they convert to... To a regular bicycle. Regular right. Bicycles. But the argument against motorcycles is the noise. If you have an electric motorcycle, well, noise, noise and yeah, noise and motorized, you know, so. No, I think yeah, further studies studies is important whether it's CCNR or somehow crafting a rule that maybe further defines what a motorized two wheel vehicle mm -hmm. is. Yeah. And is it might be an appropriate way to do it too. But anyway, I think further studies and I think the government documents can be Study issue is not inappropriate. Do we have anybody requesting uh, permission to do this in our community? Oh, no, we have we have people using doing it without asking. We don't have anybody actually requesting. I think our committee is, seems like it's a but the rule is, is a solution in search of a problem. But I do yeah. recognize they were out there in the community. So, yeah. Or I've heard, I haven't seen, but I, I understand. And, okay. And I think there's some certain concerns about. But we don't have compliance officers stopping these people or anything like that. Well, I mean, we're not having compliance officers not stopping be people for speeding in their cars. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, I don't know. I, I, probably not. I mean, there's only, you know, yeah. there's prioritization of what they're looking at, too. So, anyway, I'm not okay. saying that they wouldn't enforce the rule if they Yeah, All right, well, that's the end of my report. Well, the maintenance committee did not meet uh, this month. However, Rod uh, furnished us with an update, uh, some of which you've already heard. Um, the, uh, <coughs> the Front Lake uh, Fifth Fountain hopefully will be operational within a week. Um, uh, and the irrigation pump house, which uh, Greg also pointed out, is the walls are up. Uh, it needs to be... Um, uh, the cracks need to be grouted, and a custom gate is currently being made to um, to lock people out. And just as soon as that happens, the screen that's locked up around it will go away. Um, and the pickleball courts, as you know, have been finished. Uh, weed abatement um, will begin um, just any day now, um, with the, the mowers starting on both ends of the community and working to... Uh, clean up everything. <clears throat> the Greens Park, um, as Greg pointed out, will begin shortly also the grading on it as soon as they can get uh, the fire department approval. And uh, concrete repairs on gutters and sidewalks uh, are, are to be done in May at uh, Clementia Drive and Navarre Drive. And the asphalt work um, uh, <coughs> is out on bid. Uh, or the bid is, is being worked on, and uh, our next meeting will be June 5th. And Rod, I see you grabbed the microphone, so. Just in case you have questions. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Did I, do you need anything else covered? No, I think covered. Okay. Uh, very good. That's it. All right, thanks, Larry. Um, Parks Committee. And the Parks Committee did not meet this month. So um, we're just continuing. Um, to wait for more information regarding uh, development proposal maps and things like that, and that's not been <coughs> ready for us.
us to meet yet, so it'll be probably not until July that we meet again. Thanks, Cheryl. Uh, Alex, last committee, recreation committee. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, the recreation committee uh, has had some discussion. Um, and uh, is going to issue a, uh, a bit of a revision. Um, so the Recreation Committee recently announced some rules uh, for the 4th of July parade. Uh, the rules weren't uh, universally popular, uh, but the comments and feedback generated were very helpful, and uh, we thank everyone who took the time <coughs> to uh, call with their comments. Uh, the committee has had some discussions, as I mentioned earlier, and uh, we've reviewed the comments from members of the community and we've uh, revised the rules regarding uh, vehicles. Uh, resident vintage vehicles uh, will be allowed in the parade uh, and vintage is defined as a vehicle dated as 1969 uh, and older. And again our goal is to make this parade fun and safe for everyone and we think that this is a, this is a change that we can still um, be able to, to carry that out on. So that is the report from the Recreation Committee. Um, I just wanted to remind everybody it's not too early to get your 4th of July passes. Um, it's five free passes for each lot and then five dollars per pass after that. And a pass covers one vehicle. Um, we do this to try to not have so much backup at the gate. Um, and we issue anywhere from 1,800 to 2,300 passes per year. And it kind of depends on the day of the week. If it's on a Saturday, Friday or Saturday, we have the population swells a lot more than it does on Tuesdays or, or Wednesdays. Um, so anyway, those will be available. And we have the Giants game upcoming with against the Mets on June 25th. Um, the cost is $79. It's a one o'clock uh, game. The bus leaves at 930. And then we have the Giants versus the Chicago Cubs on Wednesday, August 9th. $79. The bus leaves at 915 for a 1245 game. We also have bingo on June 30th at 6 o'clock. Alex called our last game for us and he did a great job, so I'm hoping he'll be available on this one. Well, I think if the price is right, you certainly can, can hire me. <laughs> Terrific. <laughs> and that's the end of Alex's report. Um, I do have a comment, sort of I guess, on the, the, the vintage vehicles. I'm still sort of troubled by limiting it to vintage vehicles. To, I'm glad we're allowing vehicles back in the parade, but limiting it to vintage vehicles to 69 and older. I know the original intent was we had, and if the community's not aware, we had in the last few years numerous vehicles from outside the community. I mean, and, I, and I think really the intent is to limit it, or I think the intent should be to limit it to residents. And so maybe if somebody has a show-worthy car or a parade-worthy car that's not a vintage tank, Is, is there going to be, is there a registration process for people that want to put cars in so we know that they are resident? We haven't done that in the past, but I think, I think this year going forward we'll do it, you know, yeah. easy one, name, address, type of car, that kind of a thing. Um, um, we got some input from different people, some of who have vintage cars, as to, you know, where you draw the line um, as far as date, so. So how was that determined? What? The, the 69. Just based on, on input we got from other there's people a, that had called. There's a vehicle code about what, what, how a car can be declared an antique. And I think it's after 40 years. You can get an a, a antique or a vintage license. And that probably should be a criteria for our breaking point. It seems to be more logical about... Um, because it's defined by... Well, let's give it a shot there. this year with what we've got. We can tweak yeah. it next year and the year after, at, you know, as it, if it works out or if it doesn't, sometimes you just have to try things. Okay. So, so and I just, I just, I guess, suggest that the Recreation Committee not have that as a hard and fast rule, but have some flexibility if somebody has a... How old's your car, Jim? <laughs> I don't have a car that's... <laughs> <laughs> Nobody wants to see my car. <laughs> 
But you, did, you indicated that you know of a, a young man who's kind of rebuilt a car. Yeah, I don't know how old it is. So I think there know. should be, I think people should have the ability to come up and say, would you make an exception for this particular case? And the Recreation Committee can make that yeah, decision. Yeah, I mean, right. somebody like restores a 72 Camaro or something, yeah. and then it's, it's yeah. you know, like, show, like a showworthy kind of car, and you want, they want to drive it in the parade. I don't see a problem with that. But, and then, yeah, just come, come talk to our mayor. Yeah, definitely give us a call. Jeez, we're not here until 8 o'clock. All the witty repartee.